Greetings, my name is Matt Fiello, and I'm a technical marketing engineer with the Cisco Computing Systems Product Group, and I specialize in UCS Central. Today, I'm going to share an exciting new capability that's included with UCS Central 2.0, and that is the automated and supported conversions of a local service profile in a registered UCS domain to global service profiles uh, within UCS Central 2.0. The agenda for today's session uh, is as follows. We're going to discuss what blocking is with this local to global conversion uh, and discuss the different issues that uh, you might have to resolve beforehand. We're going to also then create global duplicate ID pools uh, in UCS Central in advance. We're going to then globalize the VLANs and vSANs of a registered UCS domain and then independently globalize each local service profile within that registered domain without disruption. And then finally, after our domain is completely globalized, we'll talk about uh, some cleanup that you can perform uh, on the uh, registered UCS domain. The first thing I'd like to discuss is what is a blocking issue. So we need to come up with a definition uh, of blocking when it comes to uh, this capability of converting a local service profile to a global service profile. So basically during the process, during the operation of conversion, if certain things are encountered with all the checks and balances um, that are deemed a blocking issue, then you're not going to be able to globalize that local service profile until you fix the blocking issue. So in other words, these are things that you cannot just make course corrections during the globalization process. These are things that you need to correct in advance uh, and then restart the globalization uh, operation, which reevaluates the state again uh, to see if you're able to globalize that local service profile. Okay, we're going to talk specifically about some of these blocking issues. First of all, a UCS domain not assigned to a domain group would be a blocking issue. So you register your UCS domain to Central. Uh, by default, it becomes a member of the ungrouped domain group. Okay, we have to move that into an operational domain group. So that's a blocking issue is if you're not a member of an operational domain group. Also, the UCS domain cannot be an administrative suspended state. Uh, think about a, a, uh, a situation where Central could not communicate with the UCS domain for an extended period of time. Maybe also maybe a disaster recovery restore of your UCS Central server. We automatically suspend the registered domains to make sure everything is okay before we resume communications. Uh, so you have to have a healthy communications between UCS Central and UCS, uh, the registered UCS domain. Uh, and that would be a blocking issue is if that domain is suspended. The next three have to do with just a healthy service profile associated to a blade or a server. So it has to be in an assigned state, okay? It has to be config applied, it has to be associated uh, you cannot globalize a service profile that is not properly associated to a Blade or a managed C-Series server. Also, we're going to check and verify that you're using a user act maintenance policy. If for some strange reason your service profile is not leveraging the user act maintenance policy, we're going to block you. Um, so you would need to go and fabricate that policy or apply that policy to your service profile template or uh, or uh, actually uh, the individual service profile itself. Okay, so the local SP uh, is in a current pending reboot status, all right? We're going to block you. Obviously, there are some changes that need to be applied to that service profile. So you resolve that first, and then you go through the globalization process. 
we are not going to support the globalization of a service profile that's leveraging a storage profile um, with this initial release of this capability. So there are some additional factors that need to be accounted for in the code to be able to make that work. And uh, as it stands now for this first release of this capability, we're not going to globalize a service profile that's using a storage profile. The next three have to do with configuring inline uh, policies, uh, which is a capability within UCS Manager. In other words, you're not referencing a policy that's created in advance. You're actually going into the service profile and modifying uh, inline um, with the service profile. There's probably few clients that actually are in that situation, uh, but that would be a blocking uh, condition. Okay, we're obviously not going to let you globalize a local service profile that shares the exact same name as an existing global service profile. We have a naming block there um, and we're not going to allow that. So you would need to go and change the name of that local service profile or the global service profile um, so those names are unique. And obviously we're talking about objects within the same org. Uh, if they were in different orgs, then it would not be a blocking issue. We're not uh, going to globalize any VNIC or VHBA templates that are set to initial. It, it's important that they're set to updating templates. So you can make that change or modification uh, in advance. But if they're set to initial, that is a blocking issue. We're not going to support VNIC, VHBA redundancy pairing. Um, so if you have VNICs and VHBAs that are linked to each other through redundancy pairing, primary, secondary, uh, you're going to have to break that link. That should be non-disruptive. Um, globalize. And then after the fact, if you want to re resume the redundancy pairing, you can do that uh, within UCS Central. There can't be any duplicate IDs in the system. Um, so UCS Central is very good at auditing for that, for any registered UCS domain. So if there's a duplicate ID, um, then you're going to have to resolve that beforehand. Also, uh, UCS Central doesn't uh, support common vSANs. In UCS Manager, you can create a vSAN and say, I want that to be on both fabrics, a common vSAN. Uh, we've never supported that with UCS Central. We need a fabric-specific vSAN. Now, you can create the same vSAN on both fabrics, but it has to be created A fabric, B fabric, okay? So uh, that's a blocking issue. Okay, I'm going to take you through a task order of steps to do the globalizations um, of a local service profile to UCS Central and a global service profile. And the first thing that I'm going to say as a best practice is to go ahead and create your global ID pools in advance. So in, in other words, you're creating duplicate IDs. You already have uh, that ID being a member of a local pool on that UCS domain. But now we're going to create um, global ID pools with the exact same blocks of IDs. You know, be it MAC addresses, UUIDs, worldwide no names, worldwide port names, etc. Okay. Uh, an added nuance of the UUID is there's a prefix and a suffix. So we're not going to create a brand new prefix in the global UUID pool. We're actually going to go to that UCS domain and we're going to copy that prefix within the local UUID pool and then we're going to use it to build the global UUID pool. And that's important. Otherwise, we would be creating a, a change in UUID during the migration um, and it would be disruptive. You're going to get a user act. So basically creating duplicates globally that basically reach out and, and account for every single ID that's being used by that UCS domain, by local service profiles on that domain. Okay, so we're going to now move on to task one and I'll show you what I did. I've actually built the global pools in UCS Central in advance, but I'll point out uh, a few things that uh, I want to cover here with you. Um, I'm currently in a uh, UCS manager uh, for the local domain. 
Um, this uh, UCS domain is running uh, firmware version 3.1.2 Echo. And uh, if we go to the servers tab and we scroll down, um, we can see that underneath pools and UCS manager, um, we do in fact have a, a local UUID pool. And uh, if I click on that, you can see that we have the prefix. So this is the prefix for the local pool. And you're going to want to capture this prefix. You can copy and paste this um, to Notepad or, or directly into UCS Central. But this is the prefix that you're going to need to replicate and use globally um, when you build out the global UUID pool. And of course, uh, you know, as far as your suffix blocks, you want to make sure that you keep the exact same format. Um, so we're, we're reproducing this pool, this pool globally uh, in its entirety. Uh, and of course, all those values will be duplicates, so they'll flag as duplicates in UCS Central, but that's okay. Um, duplicates are okay. We understand why they're there. We're doing the conversion from local to global. So uh, if we go to the uh, LAN tab, and you can see that uh, once we get to the LAN tab, we can go down and uh, look at our Mac pool. We have a local Mac pool, LMAC, and uh, this is the format for the Mac pool in this domain. So uh, again, we're going to replicate that exactly uh, as it is uh, globally in UCS Central. We go to the uh, SAN tab, and uh, go down underneath the uh, worldwide no name pool. There's an L dash. Worldwide no name, WWNN. Do the same thing. Uh, replicate this pool exactly as it's as it's shown here. Uh, and then underneath the worldwide port name, WWPN, I actually have the two pools. I I prefer to keep them fabric specific, so I make one for fabric A and one for fabric B. I typically use the uh, six doc tet as my uh, uh, differentiator between fabric. So AA for A fabric. And if I go to my worldwide port name pool for fabric B, it's going to be BB. Uh, for the no name, I didn't point this out, but for the no name, I just keep it as zeros. So whatever format you use, uh, what works for you, uh, regardless. So we have to replicate that globally. So let's uh, let's shift over to UCS Central now, and uh, let's go look at some of these pools. If you are in the new UI, you can mouse over. Uh, we're going to a vertical uh, menu that is very much in line with what UCS uh, Manager is using. And as you can see, uh, we have a category here for identifiers, so you can actually go down to your different pools here. We can look at our global UUID pool. And of course, uh, this is where that prefix has to line up. So 1111 Echo uh, 7 coincides with UCS Manager. Eleven Eleven Echo 7. And of course, I've built it. I kept my suffix block exactly the same. Uh, there's the 99. You can go back to pools. We can look at our global Mac pool. And we've kept the same format here as well. Very important that you keep the org structure exactly the same. So whatever org your, uh, your pools are uh, locally in the domain, you want to make sure that you're creating the exact same global counterpart pools uh, in the same org structure. Um, while this local to, local to global conversion is a wonderful thing, uh, and we can do this without a disruption, um, it does not allow you to change orgs. Okay, so that capability does not exist. Um, so you have to keep uh, the org structure exactly the same. Let's go back to our pools here. Let's go to our no-name pool. can go to our port name pool for fabric A. And our port name pool for fabric B. 
Okay, so you can see that we've uh, completely um, re replicated, reproduced the exact same pools uh, globally, of course, with a name change. Um, so that's why I used L dash UUID for the local. I used G dash UUID for the, uh, the global counterpart. Okay, so this is definitely something uh, that I deem to be a best practice. You want to create these pools in advance. Um, of course, you can do it at any time. You don't have to wait for a maintenance window to do this. In fact, I would recommend you do it well in advance. Make sure they're, they're done accurately and correctly. And uh, they'll be waiting for you then to do your conversions. Another reason I like to create the pools with the actual blocks in advance is uh, um, it gives you room to grow as well. So uh, in effect, uh, you could actually create just the pool with a hollow, uh, with no blocks, basically a hollow pool, an empty pool, and we would migrate the, the, uh, the actual IDs um, to the global pool. But then you end up with a with a global pool with X number of with X number of values of IDs in there. Um, I think it's just better to go ahead and put full blocks, if you would, uh, into the pool. Make sure they've uh, those global pools encompass all values that would be used locally. And then if there's leftover IDs, then you have that to build out uh, for future uh, workloads, future global service profiles. Okay, so after we've globalized all of our pools, our UUID pool, MAC address pool, worldwide no name pool, worldwide port name pool, and any management IP pools also. I, I didn't show management IP pools, but of course uh, you'd want to globalize those as well. Um, we can move on to uh, our task number two, which is actually our first globalization process. So, so the first thing we're going to do is actually globalize all the VLANs and all the vSANs in a UCS domain. And kind of the beauty of this is it can be done in a single operation. And, uh, you know, something to pay attention to is, uh, I, of course, we, we cannot use a common vSAN. As I pointed out earlier when we talked about blocks, um, in UCS Manager, you can create a single VLAN and select A and B fabric for that single VLAN. Uh, we don't support that with UCS Central. You have to create fabric specific vSANs. So you have to create an A fabric vSAN and a B fabric vSAN. So hopefully you've done that or you have that uh, uh, already in UCS Manager. Um, and then you can proceed forward with uh, the globalization process. Okay, so now that we've created our global pools that are basically carbon copies of all the local pools that existed in our domain, um, we're ready to do our first uh, globalization task. And uh, if you come up here to the uh, bar, it says, what do you want to do? This is the action bar. Um, just type the word global. It's going to filter down to the two globalization tasks. The first one you see there is globalize local service profile so we're going to actually get to that in step three um, but the task that we're going to focus on right now is globalize VLANs and vSANs so we click on that and we get presented with a pop-up that asks us for the domain that we want to globalize the VLANs and vSANs from and we're going to pick our domain it's going to ask us for a domain group location so we have to identify this for the first time uh, remember, those VLANs and vSANs down at the local domain, they, they were not members of a domain group. Whereas a global VLAN, a global vSAN in UCS Central has to be a member of a domain group. So we're going to pick uh, the appropriate domain group. In this case, I'm going to pick uh, the San Jose Data Center. And also, org permissions uh, in UCS Manager for local VLANs, they're optional to have org permissions. Um, there's probably many UCS implementations out there that uh, the customers have not even identified org permissions on the VLANs. It's not, it's not required, it's optional at the domain level. Uh, whereas for UCS Central, uh, it's mandatory. Uh, you have to define org permissions. Now you can 
make those org permissions wide open by selecting root, which exposes that VLAN to the entire org structure end to end. Okay, or you can be more discreet, more secure, and lock that VLAN down to a particular suborg. Uh, in this case, we're just going to select root. And then we're going to come over here and hit the evaluate button. Now, there's all kinds of checks and balances going on behind the scenes. This will take a few minutes. It says evaluating. And you can view the configuration status here. Um, you just have to be patient. Let this thing crank. Uh, it might take a little bit longer if you have a lot of VLANs, a lot of vSANs. Um, but this is all the checks and balances that are going on behind the scenes to make sure there's no blockages. blockages. So we just have to kind of let this thing bake. And I'm not going to shorten the video. I'm just going to let it uh, take the, the full duration here. Okay, so it didn't take too long. We click close. And uh, we're presented with all zeros and it's all green okay so basically we don't have any blockages we we are free to start globalizing these vlans and vsans and as we scroll down we see that all of our our local vlans were evaluated with no conflict if there was a conflict perhaps a naming conflict uh, you could actually come in and edit the resolution change the name uh, make those small course corrections uh, and then continue on with the globalization. So something like a conflict would not be a block. A block is something outside of this mechanism that you would have to take care of in, in advance. Like a common vSAN is a block. You know, it's not fabric specific. So here's our VLANs. If we go to the vSANs tab, excuse me, not the VLANs, but within the vSANs tab, we can see that we have no conflicts for our four vSANs. Now, policies, uh, the reason this is here is you might have a multicast policy or you might have a LAN or SAN uh, connectivity policy. Uh, I'm not using that in this particular domain, but if you had a LAN or SAN connectivity policy, they would actually show up here under policies. And of course, you could globalize those. Okay. So we've evaluated with success. Let's go ahead and start the globalization. If you want to see uh, more details, you can come up under the bell-shaped icon, go to configuration status. Okay, it looks like we are complete. You get this nice green bar that paints itself when the operation is uh, successful and has completed. Now, if we go to actually our VLANs, global VLANs, uh, we can see that now we've populated all of these VLANs, okay, into UCS Central, and they're now global VLANs. In a similar fashion, if we go to our vSANs, um, they in turn have been globalized. Okay, now that we have globalized our VLANs and vSANs for the uh, targeted domain, uh, we can now move on to step three, which is uh, the exciting task. Uh, you're actually going to globalize a local service profile. And uh, we have to do this. Uh, per uh, local service profile, so you can't mass select. You have to do these one at a time. Um, we're going to go through an evaluation phase where it gives you the opportunity to identify any blocks. Remember, there was a long list of blocks uh, earlier in the presentation. Um, you'll most certainly get some conflicts, and you're going to be able to resolve those conflicts. So conflicts are not a bad thing. Conflicts are just things that uh, we chose not to automate to give you some flexibility. Uh, no two customers are the same. Uh, you're going to have uh, a choice of cloning something, okay, or uh, or picking a policy that already exists globally that has the exact same settings uh, as the local policy. Um, then basically, after you do that first that first globalization with that first service profile, uh, you very well might have cloned some policies uh, to be global. 
um, when you start doing the second and third service profile, you can simply just access that, that policy. Okay, so before we move on with uh, globalizing our first local service profile, I wanted to show you uh, the VLANs here in UCS Manager. Notice that the uh, owner is global. Okay, so uh, uh, as part of you uh, executing task number two, the globalization of the VLANs, VSANs, you'll see that the ownership has changed from local to global. So let's go ahead and go to our servers tab. Um, so I have some, I, I have a small domain here. I only have a single chassis and only have uh, seven service profiles. You see uh, eight here, but I'm, I'm missing six. The reason for that is because uh, uh, one of my blades, I went ahead and decommissioned. Uh, it's got some bad uh, dim chips. Uh, this is an older system. So I just went ahead and took it out of the system. Okay, so that leaves us with the uh, the other seven service profiles. And if I click on that first service profile, uh, it is in fact associated properly. Um, it's powered down. Uh, I don't actually have an OS on this. It's a new system uh, built out for this demo, but uh, I'll show you the FISM uh, tasks. Um, so you'll know that uh, there actually was no reboot. Also, uh, we have a user act maintenance policy. So you'll see that there has been no uh, uh, pending act um, for this globalization process. Notice also that uh, I'm assigned a, a template here. Uh, like most customers, uh, they, they bind their service profiles to templates. Um, you'll notice that during the globalization process, we actually unbind and we don't migrate the service profile template. Okay, uh, by design, we don't do that. And uh, the way that we get a global service profile template is once you've migrated your service profiles from local to global, you can simply take one of those service profiles, create a global service profile template from the global service profile, and then simply bind to it. Um, so that creation of the global template from a service profile and binding to it, uh, that's non-disruptive because obviously you're creating a template from you know, a service profile that's the reference. Okay, so there would be nothing that changed uh, to cause a, uh, a pending act or a disruption. Okay, so here's our first local service profile. We're gonna go back to UCS Central and we're gonna go back up here and type global. And this time we're gonna globalize a local service profile. Okay, so definitely read the, uh, the warnings here. We absolutely recommend that you still use a maintenance window to do this. You're going to select your domain. And then once you select your domain, you're going to get presented with a list of service profiles. And of course, if you have larger domains, you can search. <clears throat> but again, these service profiles are only... Uh, the, the only service profiles that are associated to blades. So if you have some service profiles that are just freestanding, they're not associated to a blade or a, a managed C-series server, uh, you're not gonna actually see those in a list. If you wanna globalize those, you're gonna have to associate those to a blade or managed C-series server. So we're gonna pick our first one here and we're gonna say evaluate. And again, uh, this might take a few minutes. We're gonna view the configuration status here. There are a lot of checks. Um, there is a lot of code behind the scenes uh, to make this happen. Uh, so you just have to be patient. Um, while it does take a little bit of time, while you are going to have to click through and, and resolve some conflicts, um, you know, what do you gain? Well, you gain the ability to have an automated and supported way of migration, uh, without disruption in, in many cases, in most cases without disruption. Okay. So we have, uh, a hundred percent complete on that. We can go ahead and click close. 
Not uncommon to have the conflicts that would need to be resolved. The beautiful thing about this is it's very straightforward in how it's laid out. Um, we've categorized everything and I'll walk you through it. Uh, they're just conflicts. There's actually no blocks so that we're able to resolve everything and actually globalize this uh, local service profile. So you'll notice three different categories here. You have pool conflicts, uh, policy conflicts. Now these are simple policies and a simple policy is something that's uh, maybe like a bias policy or a firmware policy or a boot policy. Um, it's just a simple policy. It's not a policy that's built upon other policies or doesn't necessarily access other pools and things like that. The advanced policies, uh, conversely, um, actually reference other pools, other policies. You know, you think like a VNIC template or VHBA template, they reference pools, um, they reference VLANs and vSANs, they reference uh, policies uh, like adapter policies, etc., QoS. So that's the difference between policies and advanced policies. And uh, we have the tabs laid out in order. So I definitely recommend as a best practice, you resolve all of your pool conflicts first, then you go to simple policies. And then by the time you get your pools and simple policies done, then all the advanced policies just clean up. Um, or they, once you go through the resolution, they clean up very nicely, okay? So this is definitely a best practice. Go pools, go policies, go advanced policies. So let's go through and start uh, matching things up here. So we have a local Mac pool here, and uh, it's wanting us to change the resolution. Well, we have a global Mac pool out there that we've already built that has the exact same values. So resolve conflict. Notice when I resolve the conflict, it gets put to the bottom of the list. It's no longer red. It's green. No conflict. We're good to go. Just do the same thing for our worldwide port name pool for B fabric. Make sure you grab the right one. It will not resolve if you grab the opposite fabric. So it will alert you. And we got a resolution here. Just keep going. Do the worldwide port name for A fabric, match it up with its global counterpart. We're going to do the node name pool. G W W N N. And then finally our UUID pool. And because we copied the prefix over and built the UUID pool exactly like it was in the UCS domain, we're going to be able to resolve this. All right. So now we have a, a goose egg here. It's green, all green for pools. We can proceed on with the simple policies. Now, a lot of the policies uh, matched up. Okay. And show no conflict. That's, that's great. Um, a few did not. A few have maybe some settings that are different uh, between the local and the global. So we're going to just do a change resolution here. The first time I do this, uh, I'm, I'm just going to clone the policy. So I'm going to say g-vmware. I'm going to resolve. of the zero over land policy. There must've been something different uh, in the settings. I'm gonna clone it to G-SOL. This ensures me um, that the settings will be exactly the same. The only thing we're doing is creating a global policy of the exact same settings with a different name. And we've resolved all of our, our conflicts here. Uh, notice the firmware policy down here. Um, if you're using a policy, you'll definitely, definitely want to make sure that uh, uh, you have the firmware package downloaded to UCS Central for the proper uh, rev of firmware. Um, so I've actually in advance downloaded 312 Echo, Bravo, and Charlie packages uh, to UCS Central. And uh, by doing so, then we, uh, then we can resolve here.
let's go to the advanced policies. And as expected, we have our templates. So we have our two VNIC templates, um, two VHBA templates here. So let's resolve those. So L LAN B, I actually have some global. No, I don't. So we'll clone those. So we'll call it G LAN B. It resolved because we did a clone. LAN A becomes G LAN A. Now this is my naming convention. I'm sure yours will be different, um, but I'm trying to keep this uh, simple. So I've used uh, L for local, G for global. So L SAN B becomes G SAN B. And then L SAN A becomes G SAN A. All right. So now we have everything successful, evaluated with success. We have no conflicts in pools, policies, or advanced policies. We can actually click the start globalization. And before we actually acknowledge that, I want to come over here. Make sure you understand and see that that service profile uh, is, in fact, local ownership. Oops. There's our local service profile, LG Demo 1. Click yes. Uh, we can actually look at the configuration status here. Again, be a little bit patient. Okay, so it looks like we've completed here. Let's close that. Let's click over to UCS Manager. Ah, we can see that our local service profile now has the green global icon indicating that this is now a global service profile. Let's click on that. It's still cleaning up a little bit. It says associating, but all of these Actions here are non-disruptive. So we're going to let this complete and clean up, but actually there's nothing here um, that's disruptive. We can see that our owner, of course, is global. Have a lot of skip steps in the FISM. We can see that we're successful here. We've got the green uh, banner message here. 
uh, this actually becomes a, a historical record. Um, so actually there's an icon here on the blue bar, Globalization Tasks. If you click on that blue bar, uh, these are all the globalization tasks that have taken place. Okay, so now we have 100% here, and uh, again, uh, despite all the FISM steps, this was a non-disruptive operation. And we are globalized with our first uh, service profile. Um, so we can actually close out of this, and we can move on to our second service profile evaluate look at the configuration status That's com complete. We get our same uh, conflicts. So I'm going to click through this at a little faster pace this time. We'll move on to our policies. Let's resolve. Uh, now, since we already cloned in our first uh, service profile globalization, uh, the VMware policy, we can just reference it. GVMware. And for our zero over land policy, we'll do the same. We're going to reference the existing. A policy we already globalized. And we can see we have no more conflicts. Let's resolve our templates. We already cloned them in the first uh, globalization process, so now we'll just go ahead and reference them. Pick the wrong one. You have to be careful. It did not resolve because I didn't pick the right one. So this is GLAN B. This should be GLAN A. This should be G SAN B.
This should be G sin A. Okay, so we're now uh, conflict free. Let's go ahead and start the globalization. Okay, so we have 100% uh, completion. As you can see, we already have our green banner here. Let's go ahead and go over to the domain. We have our second service profile that's been globalized. And we had a lot of skip steps here. Okay, so... Uh, I spared you a lot of uh, wasted time on the video. I actually worked ahead and I've uh, globalized uh, all the seven service profiles. Um, so you can see that number eight here was globalized with success. If we go over to UCS Manager, you can see all my service profiles have been globalized. And you'll notice, uh, if you recall back, I said earlier that uh, these local service profiles were bound to an updating template. And during the globalization process, we actually unbind and then migrate the, uh, the service profile or change the ownership to global, in effect. Um, we don't actually uh, globalize the template. So as you can see, for these service profiles that are now global, uh, they do not have a, a template. There was no template created and pushed down. So uh, one thing we can do is we can actually go back to uh, our service profiles and let's pick our first service profile and we can see that there's no template here we can actually create a service profile template from the service profile and that's what we're going to do so we're going to create a template from the profile give it a name we'll stay consistent here Make sure we select the right organization and we're going to make it an updating template. We'll create that. Now we can go to the service profile and simply bind to the updating template. And we are assured that this is uh, non-disruptive because there's actually no changes. Uh, we created the template from the service profile. And then notice uh, when we go back to UCS Manager, we actually see that that template did in fact populate and get pushed down. Okay, so uh, as a final step in a task, uh, you might want to go into the domain and actually clean up some of those local objects uh, that are no longer being used, they're not being consumed. Uh, once we've globalized everything, uh, there's some uh, perhaps local templates, pools, policies uh, that, that you can, in fact, go in and delete. But you need to be careful and you need to make sure that the owner of any object uh, um, is, is global. Uh, you should not be able to delete any global object from UCS Manager, but uh, still do the, the due diligence and check um, before you delete a, a local object, make sure it's not being used by some other local service profile um, in some type of mixed environment. So just be careful. Okay, so back inside uh, UCS Manager, uh, once we've globalized uh, all the service profiles, uh, uh, an example of something that you could delete uh, is uh, that local template. Remember, uh, we did not migrate it. Uh, we actually um, unbound from the template during the globalization process. And then on the UCS Central side, we actually created a global service profile template from one of the, uh, the global service profiles. Um, so, 
you know, things that you want to be careful of before you delete is actually come in here and do things like show policy usage. Uh, we can see that nothing is uh, bound to this template. Okay, so we could in fact delete this template. If we go, uh, for instance, maybe check out our MAC address pool, uh, we can see that we have a MAC, uh, L MAC. Show policy usage or so show pool usage rather. Uh, we see that the only thing that's uh, associated with it is a template, and we could, of course, delete that template. So, just a couple things here. Uh, just be careful. Um, but if you've globalized everything, everything exists in UCS Central. Um, everything will have ownership as global. Uh, so, you should be able to come in here and clean up quite a bit uh, from your, uh, your old local environment. So I hope you have found this uh, video useful and enlightening. Uh, I hope you have many successful transitions of your service profiles from local to global. And uh, as always, uh, if you encounter any issues, any problems, um, feel free to reach out and we'll do the best uh, we can do to help you. Thank you and appreciate your time.